Are we good? Good morning, everybody. So um, we are having a couple of technical difficulties, so I appreciate your patience. Looks like we have a bad video splitter or something like that. So for our virtual attendees, um, we won't be able to have the slides on the screencast um, immediately, but we're working to fix that problem. And in the meantime, we'll just, you know, wing it. <laughs> um, so I want to thank everyone for coming and uh, to welcome you to the first annual Open SUNY Coat Summit. I'm so excited to, to be here today and to have all of you here today to share um, in uh, this, um, uh, you know, what I think in 20 years will be a historic event. Um, 20 years ago, actually it was 16 years ago, we had the first annual SLN summit, which was really tongue in cheek because it was like four of us, I think. Of, of any of us that were here, I think Bob Yavitz is on, and me were the ones who were there. Um, uh, but anyway, today you are all here and I'm so happy and hope that in 20 years or in 15 years we'll all be able to be together again and be celebrating um, a long history of uh, the Open SUNY um, Coat uh, Summit. So, um, so I see people in the audience that I don't know and so if this is your first summit, um, uh, at all, uh, of any flavor, uh, can you please raise your hand so that we can see who you are? Okay, so for those of you who are not new, take a note and go and introduce yourself to the folks who are new and make sure that they feel welcome and that they uh, kind of get a feeling of uh, who this community is and, and uh, what we are about. We have um, sold out this year. Um, we have over 150 uh, registrants um, and participants for this conference, which um, is um, really the, the top end of the number of folks we've ever had attend. And also, um, really, our goal is to keep it to about 150 people, so thank you very much um, for being one of those. Um, uh, let's see, I have a number of things I want to make sure to talk with you about. Um, I, we, this year we're also um, opening the summit. Historically it was for instructional designers and for directors of online learning. And this year we're opening it up to um, the experienced and advanced Open SUNY fellow roles. Um, so uh, who has, um, uh, um, joined CODE as an Open SUNY fellow? Okay, so if you have not yet, joined CODE as an Open SUNY Fellow, regardless of uh, whether you are within SUNY or external to SUNY. And I actually I should ask, people who are friends of SUNY, people who are external to SUNY? Kyle, you need to raise your hand. <laughs> Landon, you need to raise your hand. <laughs> Okay, there are a couple of, okay, so, uh, so you can also join the summit as, an, uh, as a friend of SUNY, uh, join the, the um, Center for Online Teaching Excellence as a friend of SUNY, and so if you have not yet joined as a fellow, I invite you uh, to follow that link, and, um, and if you join as interested or experienced, you are immediately um, uh, accepted into um, the role of Open SUNY Fellow. Um, then I also wanted to mention um, that we are um, collecting online effective practices from our Open SUNY fellows and um, had a campaign to uh, collect proposals for, um, for online effective practices and we have voting open right now so if you follow that link you can vote for your favorite effective practices. We have 10 um, that were uh, submitted and the, the um, voting has been quite active over the last few weeks and uh, we will announce the winners of the effective, uh, pr the community, um, uh, uh, you know, led um, uh, voting. So th the community is voting on these effective practices and so uh, if you would uh, participate in that, we'd really appreciate it. Um, and let's see. 
I also wanted to mention and um, recognize uh, the Twitter team who is working uh, furiously behind the, the, the scenes to promote uh, this event and Open SUNY and COAT through various social media outlets. The hashtag for the event is COAT Summit. And uh, these are the folks that are uh, um, uh, you know, part of the volunteer t team. Anyone is welcome to uh, participate. And for our virtual audience, uh, I just want to reinforce the use of the hashtag uh, so that if, uh, while you're watching any of the presentations, if you have any questions for uh, the presenters, if you use the hashtag, we'll see your question and can then um, uh, bring it to the presenter's attention. So again, the hashtag is um, uh, Coat Summit. Um, here are some links, um, and I'll post these, um, you know, during breaks and stuff so that you can see them uh, and, and follow them, uh, um, uh, you know, at your leisure. Uh, let me see what other notes I have. Um, I wanted to uh, mention that we will be conducting some interviews, some video interviews. Um, and so you'll see Felice Banner and Jeremy Case in the halls with a camera. And they may flag you down and ask you some questions like, uh, describe your online course in one word, or um, what makes uh, a good online course, or how do students, uh, what, what, if, you know, what would a student say is the most important thing, an online student say is the most most important thing that an online instructor should know or do. So if you get flagged down, please um, uh, don't be shy. It's very informal and we're collecting um, um, anecdotes and tips and suggestions and interviews with you all so that we can then share them with our new uh, to online learning uh, faculty as well as, um, as uh, objects for various work streams and, um, and um, projects and initiatives that we have going on. So I hope you'll take advantage um, over the next three days um, of uh, say, giving us your, your two cents worth um, regarding online uh, teaching and learning. Um, this morning, I want to let everyone know that you should take a break whenever you, um, whenever you need to. We're not going to have a formal break during the morning because I want to move us along. Uh, and we're starting, you know, um, a little bit late. Um, so just, p p it's informal. Please feel free to just get up and go get coffee or, or do whatever you need to do, stretch or, or whatever you need to do. Uh, I also wanted to mention that on Wednesday, um, the Chancellor, Nancy Zimfer, will be uh, with us. And um, so I just want to put in a plug for making sure. Sorry, I said Wednesday, but I meant Friday. <laughs> Today is Wednesday. It must be Syracuse. <laughs> um, <laughs> and sunny outside. Um, so it's Friday that she will be with us. I keep saying Wednesday, but it is Friday. Friday morning she'll be with us. And so I'm very excited that she has taken time out of her busy schedule to join us and to come uh, to see all of you and the presentations on Friday. So, um, so, uh, so I hope you will be here with us for that. Um, uh, I wanted to also um, thank... Uh, the, um, the CPD for all of their support and help for putting on this event. Without them, it's not possible. Nancy, Michaela, Paulette, Judy, and of course, uh, always with Kim's support. Uh, so I just wanted to thank them. I, of course, they're not in the room, but I really wanted to um, make sure to, to um, recognize them. And then a, a number of other people, my own staff, um, and Carrie Hatch for his support, and, um, and Jeff Hotchberg from System Administration, who is here doing our live streaming and our recording um, and uh, the virtual attendees um, for those of you um, I'm waving hello to you and um, hoping that you will use the hashtag and say hi to all of us here and where you are right now and what temperature it is where you are um, and um, let's see what else do I want you to know um, we are also doing um, some uh, social media badging, some, some fun little activity. You'll see cards on the table in front of you. So if you want to participate in that, um, you can earn some um, virtual as well as physical 
sticker badges um, by participating in this, uh, this fun activity. So every time you use a different social media um, outlet to talk about the summit or something about online learning, you can earn a badge. And Erin Manny is the one who is um, kind of coordinating that. And so if you have a question about it, just uh, find, Aaron, where are you? Are you here? There you are. There she is. <laughs> um, from the Twitter team, can you raise your hands just so that people can see who you are? All right, awesome. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate your help with this. Um, I uh, wanted to mention that um, you uh, were our wonderful photographer, Laura Murray, is um, there in the background. She takes amazing pictures. Everybody's clapping. Yay, thank you, Laura. <laughs> she, she makes everyone look as, uh, astoundingly beautiful. And um, the, I'll put the Flickr group up um, later in between breaks so that you can see uh, some of the pictures from, uh, from this summit and then some from the last summit will also probably be, uh, be in there. Um, all right, what have I forgotten? Have I forgotten anything yet? OK, so let's move on to our, um, our first presentation of the day. And I um, am going to ask Lisa Stevens, where are you, Lisa, uh, to come up and um, introduce our first panel. And so um, thanks, Lisa, for introducing this um, amazing group. Yeah, let me get that ready for you here. You want to hold this? Sure. Let me just talk I'll, in here. Yep, and I'll let you. I can just talk here for a minute. Um, I was thinking on the way here, I'm, I'm Lisa Stevens, I'm the Senior Strategist for Academic Innovation and I'm responsible to, to keep everyone in line with the IITG program, which by the way, just a simple reminder, the applications are due March 2nd, so if you're working on a proposal, just, just keep the deadline in mind. But uh, one day, a long time ago, or seemingly a long time ago, in a land far, far away, um, we sat around a table and, and developed a request for proposals for IITGs. And one of the challenges of serving on the FACT Council is everyone needs to kind of take their campus hat off for a moment and think about the benefits uh, SUNY-wide for any type of innovation and how something can potentially be brought to scale. And as we were developing the RFP, we included some very deliberate language about that. And the hope was that someday we would realize projects that truly could, could have an influence SUNY-wide and would be very available SUNY-wide. I can think of no other point. Uh, I, I, the TOPE project is just such a nice point of pride to that. And it's so inclusive and so many people have been exposed to great learning opportunities from this project. And it truly has served as a model of a great way to collaborate across the system. So with that, it's with great great pride that I introduce my friend and colleague from UB, Robin Sullivan, who in turn will introduce the rest of her team. Thank you so much. I feel like I should do a little test. Hello. A little is this again. mic working also? Excellent. I will give that one to the panel. Okay. I, I'll drop it off on the web. Is this working for you? Great. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody? Good. Okay. Welcome. Lisa, thank you for the wonderful introduction. And today, um, the presentation that we are going to provide for you is called um, the Tools of Engagement Project. Hope for short, and what we're going to discuss is where do we go from here. So um, my name is Robin Sullivan. If you need to look me up at the UB directory, you need to put in Roberta. Um, I'm an instructional designer and online learning specialist with our Center for Educational Innovation, and I'm the principal investigator of TOPE. And I'd also like to um, introduce some colleagues that are here with me. Cherie Van Putten is an instructional designer from Binghamton University. She is also one of the co-PIs of the project. Nathan Whitley Grassi is a faculty educational technologist from Empire State College, and he is also one of our co-PIs. Um, and um, we also have some TOPE fellows who will be um, sharing some input at the end of our presentation. Uh, Deb Spiro is a new fellow 
with Nassau Community College and Vice President of Distance Education. And also Ann Reed is a colleague of mine from UB. She is an instructional designer with the Graduate School of Education. And so I just wanted to introduce the project and I'm gonna let Cherie kind of give us a head start. Okay, and I'll see if I can get us back on time. I'm usually pretty quick. Um, first of all, to get started, the other one. The other one. What we want to do today is, is bring this up to you so that we can come up with ways to make this something that's SUNY-wide supported and sustainable. Um, the people who have gone through the project think highly of it, and we would like to see it something that can continue. And basically what SUNY TOPE is, Tools of Engagement, is faculty development. It's professional development for faculty. And the thing that I am most interested in is the fact that it's, it's social and there's a networking component so that you can meet colleagues from other campuses or people who are doing similar things to you. And why do we need SUNY TOPE? Uh, the reason... <laughs> Okay, the reason we need something like taupe is because we were using the little Fisher-Price phone when we were kids. Kids today, when you're at a restaurant, are teething on iPhones. So they are much more connected than we were growing up. And we can't use yesterday's teaching methods to reach these students. And here's some of the technologies that we cover. Um, basically, uh, Robin will take you on a very brief tour, but we are trying to expose faculty to these, these different products, um, and then they can use them in their classes. And basically, as instructional designers on all of the college campuses, we're pretty much doing the same thing. We're trying to teach these uh, faculty the same tools. So what we think is rather than each of us reinventing inventing the wheel, why don't we work together and, and have this a resource that we can all use? And we have plenty of interest from campuses. Here are the 11 participating campuses this time around. We have many requests for other organizations and other campuses to get involved. And I'm going to turn it over to Robin and she's going to give you the tour. Okay, so um, the URL to reach the Tools of Engagement Project website is up on the screen there, and um, it is suny.edu slash T-O-E-P. So hopefully that's pretty memorable. If you look at your toe, that was our original acronym, and we said okay, so we added project to the end of it. So suny.edu slash toe project. Um, so, um, and if anybody, I'm not sure if the slides are syncing in the streaming out there, but you can access the slides from the home page of the TOPE website and also we have a list of presentations that are linked that it will be available after today. Um, so the project is publicly available. It's a, it's a website available to the world and um, if you go to the TOPE website, one of the first things you're going to do is click on the TOPE home and then go down to join our community. So there is a form on that page where if you were interested to join the project, you would give us your contact information and then join the Google Plus TOPE social network community where we have right now about 300 faculty and staff from the 11 participating campuses that are engaging in a very rich dialogue. How do you use some of these freely available online Web 2.0 tools to the, for the purpose of teaching and learning to enhance student and instructor communication and collaboration. After you register, um, you'll be part of the community. You can then come back to the any part of the site, and there's a minimum amount of activity that you would do in the project. First thing everybody is responsible for is to go through the lifelong learning section, and that section has just some very basic ideas about pedagogy, some terms, some uh, instructional design models, some uh, teaching th theories. And you go through some of those sites, we talk about Creative Commons, accessibility, and you learn some of the basic underlying ideas that need to be 
considered when you're talking about using educational technologies. So you go through the lifelong learning section. The site is rich with resources and tutorials. And then you post a reflection into the community. This is what I learned. This is what was surprising. Um, this is how I might apply this to my teaching. Then you would come back to the site and go to um, one of those 10 different sections. Cherie showed you the word cloud of the different sections that we talk about. And you pick three areas that you'd like to concentrate on. So maybe if you pick the section on online presentations, you would go to that part of the website, run through some of the resources that we have. We talk about um, how the, um, so if you go to the section on photo sharing, there's a little introduction, what is photo sharing? How is it relevant to teaching and learning is a prominent section on each page. Then a little further down, you're exposed to some of the prominent tools in that area. This is the section on presentations. And we try to just filter down. There's like a million and two presentation tools out there. So we've tried to just kind of, uh, I think Chris Price has said, take the fire hydrant of the internet and bring it down to a cool glass of water. There's still a lot of information on the site, though. Once you get through the tutorials and resources, you're then exposed to a discovery activity. In that activity, you're asked to actually create an account and play with one of the tools, experiment in a safe environment, and then post your reflection about what you learned or how you might use that tool in your teaching to the community. After you make your post, you can then go through and request your badge. We've adopted the Credly badging system, and that's something that SUNY is also working with. Um, and um, so, at, after you collect your three badges for the three sections that you choose and your lifelong learning badge, you would then earn a TOPE Mastery Badge. Um, at the end of every section is a very important piece. What does the research say? So we've had some librarians who've kind of curated the information that's out there to find some literature that's useful on the different types of tools. This is just a screen that talks a little bit about um, it, it's an example of the community. We've gotten permission to share that. Right now, the community is private to the participating 11 SUNY campuses. And um, we have fellows that are recruited from each of the different campuses that are in there to encourage deeper thought. So as somebody's learning to use a particular tool, the fellows um, and the PIs are in the community kind of encouraging uh, connections um, to other participants. Um, sometimes people are in the same floor, but they don't know each other's experimenting. We can introduce them. Sometimes they're on opposite ends of New York State. And we can say, oh, did you know that this person is also um, very interested in accessibility and they're interested in similar topics as you? I was um, very happy to see all of the really um, in-depth communication in the TOPE community. And last phase, we, this is our third year running it, took all the text from the community, pasted it into a word cloud, and was really thrilled to see that the most often used word in the community is students and learning. It's not you know, the name brands of the tools. It's how, does this, how do these tools help pedagogy? One thing that um, I do believe helps to get the motivation and encouragement of TOPE um, to the faculty to you know, kind of squeeze this into their already busy time schedule is we have an incentive award process. So for each year, and this is something that has been funded through the IITG, is um, some awards are available for the most pedagogically intriguing use of a TOPE tool. And so at the end of the registration period, actually registration for TOPE for phase two, um, if you or your faculty are you know, from one of the 11 campuses, it ends this Friday. So anybody that wants to register to be considered for incentives should get in there. Um, and then by April 3rd is when the community conversations will be voted on by the participants and registrants to determine who is the most pedagogically intriguing ideas in relation to TOPE tools. And then we have a number of first place awards that we'll give out. They will also get the Uber badges that say I am a TOPE uh, certified um, 
person. And we have a number of second place awards also to encourage the peer support. So some smaller iTunes gift cards are, will be voted on and distributed to those that are kind of just encouraging further communication in the community. Um, and then also there's an internal contest among the fellows to get um, the Uber Peer Mentor Badge so that they can um, you know, be encouraged to mentor others in the community. One of the questions in relation to sustaining TOPE, um, a question that we've talked about from the beginning, are still talking about, and will still talk about, is you know, what is the perceived value of incentives? And on our pre and post surveys, you know, any good IITG project has a great pre and post assessment of some sort. So we ask our participants, you know, how important are these incentives? And we can see through the data, and Nathan's our data person, he can talk a little bit further about all of the data we've been collecting. Um, but they, you know, the, the incentives are not listed as being very um, important to them. But you'll see a little bit further down that they do kind of show themselves um, in some of the data that we've been collecting. So um, right here, we've uh, in phase two alone, we issued 491 badges across SUNY for faculty that have participated in TOPE for the various levels. Um, that shows you the top first place badges um, and our second place awards. And then there's the constellation, they call that, of the many different categories with um, the TOPE Mastery for anybody that does the minimum lifelong learning plus three of their choice. You can see that 91% um, of those badges were shared in a LinkedIn network. That number flabbergasted me. Um, I think many of the faculty didn't even know what LinkedIn was maybe before their involvement. And to see that the badges were shared out um, so widely was a really great thing to see. So we're kind of um, going through this a little quick because we want to be able to open up a dialogue with all of you to try to see how can we overcome some of the roadblocks that are hindering TOPE from being a SUNY-wide and a supported resource. Um, biggest roadblock, as in most everything, a lack of, a lack of stable funding. And we were able to very successfully secure uh, level one IITG grant the first year, and the second year we were the um, highest funded IITG grant uh, with the top award. And this year we're kind of just running on some leftover steam um, and uh, a lot of great energy from the PIs and the fellows that are involved. Um, so something that we need to work through. Um, with IIT, you're only able to have two rounds of funding, and we have been submitting grants outside of IITG. Um, and we will continue to seek out external funding to keep it going. Um, as I mentioned that the award incentive structure is one of the things that the budget does need to support, and that's one of the roadblocks that we have. Um, we also give a very small, very small stipend to the fellows for each campus. And I see you know, a few of the fellows here, and we have a couple here on our panel that'll talk. Um, and, and that's just minor, and, but they have a big role, a big role at campus to kind of get the word out about the project to their faculty and staff and to also be mentors. Sometimes that's face-to-face -face sessions. Um, you know, you're interested in you know, designing an online course, but here are some tools that might help you capture some of your content and share it with your students or tools that you might ask your students to use so that they can communicate using emerging technology tools. So they have a big role, but they do receive a, a very small incentive for that. Um, and there's a lot of administrative overhead. Um, you know, the, the necessity to maintain the TOPE website. Since these are emerging technology tools, I think an underlying principle of the project is technology changes. And so with that, we are continually trying to curate what are the most popular tools that are out there and what are the tools that um, uh, we should be recommending our ones to consider. And you know, just keeping that up is very, uh, it's time consuming. Um, recruiting campus fellows, recruiting campuses for involvement, uh, processing the awards takes some time and energy. 
And also, I think just the ability to, for us to continually collect and analyze the research. How is this tool effective? We keep learning things. Each time we offer it, what we can change, what we can improve, what we can do better. Um, so that's a continual process. And then there's always, I think, an idea that we need to think about is how can we balance the centralized SUNY support with the on-campus support? How can um, the centers like CPD and COACH and uh, SUNY Central Administration with the IATG and every other effort that goes through SUNY, how can we balance that but yet also keep a support model in place at the campuses for the project? And so one of the ways that um, Open SUNY Coat has been very supportive of TOPE is that um, we, have, we were extended an invitation to mention the ability to be a, Coat, uh, to be a TOPE fellow to the Coat fellows. So <laughs> we had hired um, some, some TOPE fellows from announcements that went out through the Coat community and through their listservs. And so some of those fellows are not from the participating campuses, but they're doing a fabulous job. They're people you know, like yourself that are here that have instructional design knowledge and faculty that are very interested in supporting emerging technology tools. And so that was a really good way to kind of bring in more fellows. And um, I, I, it also caused us to bring in um, a, an additional new campus and uh, request to become new campus members through some of that communication. And I would also like to thank the SUNY faculty advisory committees. Um, uh, faculty advisory committees on teaching and technology are FAC2 task groups. Um, currently in effect we have the interactive content for teaching and learning and also a FAC task group on mobile technologies. We recently put an invite out to the groups to become a part of the TOPE community, even if they're not from the participating campuses. The mission that they have, the charge that they have to try to evaluate these topics and then make recommendations forward to SUNY and to the provost is very much in line with what TOPE is trying to achieve. So we would like them to kind of be a part of the conversations that faculty are experiencing. What are some of the issues that are um, being brought up in the community and what do the task groups need to think about when they create the reports at the end of the year. And with this, I'm going to pass the baton over to Nathan. So I was asked to come in and talk a little bit about some of the impact that the TOTE project has had on SUNY faculty. <clears throat> Most of this data comes from our phase two because the phase three is still undergoing, uh, still ongoing right now. So in phase two, we had more than 3,000 unique website visitors. Uh, we took a good look at the analytics to, to make sure we weren't getting a lot of duplication there. As Robin mentioned, we had nearly 500 badges awarded. And the vast majority of those badges were actually shared out to LinkedIn, which to me suggests that, that faculty valued those at, at some level. Um, more than 200 members joined an active online community. The big change between the phase one and the phase two is we in instituted the Google community space and faculty were able to go in and collaborate together and, and, and share experiences in, in an isolated social network. Uh, as Robin mentioned, we also did a lot of pre-post surveys to look at, at what faculty perceived the effectiveness of these tools to be. And we had about 187 people who actually participated in those surveys. Uh, without getting into too many numbers and, and boring us this early in the morning, um, of our 187, about 140 of those were faculty and instructional uh, staff. M the rest were various other walks of life within in higher ed. Um, as you can see, we've got a variety of spikes throughout the program period. Those usually correspond with email blasts reminding people that they should go in and do whatever they're supposed to do, just, just like students if we look at these for <laughs> learning management systems. Uh, in addition, we can take a look at the entire period that we've been running TOPE over, over the th all three phases. And we can see spikes around each of the period, um, periods where we're actively encouraging people to access the site. But what's interesting is people are in there looking at the site and interacting with things in the downtime in between with no prompting from us. 
So we're hoping that that will allow us to build a, a terminal velocity to allow the project to continue um, as, as we move forward, even when we're not actively pushing for, for participants. So one of the instruments that we use to actually look at, at faculty's engagement in, in this project is called the CBAM, or the Concerns Based Adoption Model. And what this is, is it, it separates faculty's concerns about the, the innova in innovation into seven categories. I know there's only six up here. Zero is a category, and that's general awareness that this innovation exists. So the, it looks at informational, you know, is, this seems interesting, I'd like to know more about it. Personal, uh, concerns about the changes. Management concern, this is, you know, how, would it, how much time would this take me to set up or what kind of supports I might have in using it. Consequence concern, how will this new approach affect my students. Collaboration, I'm looking forward to sharing ideas with other teachers. And then refocusing, um, I have some ideas about other things that would work even better. Um, the, the CBAM instrument, stages 0, 1, 2, and 3 is kind of your transition, are kind of the lower level concerns. We, we often see those at a higher level in a pretest because people don't know as much about the technology. The lower ones, the four, five, and six are, are higher order concerns. They show that people are thinking more deeply about the use of technology tools or how they'll actually integrate them into their classrooms. So this is an example of our, our before and after survey for phase two. And the red line is, is before the, the working in taupe and the green line is, I'm sorry, other way around. Green line is, is before and the red line is after. And what we see is, is a significant drop in the concern um, in some of those lower level areas and an increase in concerns on the higher level areas, showing that faculty, as they move through the, the taupe process and try out the tools and interact in the community, they start to think about and have concerns about things on a much higher order um, when it comes to teaching and learning. They're not just interested in Flickr because they've heard of Flickr and they want to know more about it. They want to know how much time will this take to integrate into my classroom? How can I use this with other teachers? What other tools might actually be more effective than this in, in my teaching? One of the areas that was really interesting to us that, that we noted is the management area, which of course is talking about how much time will this take to integrate or how much support I have, is the one factor that varies hugely across campuses. Each of these lines is a different campus across SUNY. It doesn't really matter which one's which. But as you can see, most of the areas are pretty close together, except that management, which suggested to us that there's, there's a lot of inequity in how people think about time spent investing in classroom materials or the support that they would have in integrating technology into their classroom. So this really feeds back to the idea that we need to have some, it'd be nice to have some unified central training process or professional development process where people could go and get some support in the use of some of these tools. Um, Thanks to the funding that we've gotten from IITG, we've been able to put together a couple of publications on this so far. We just recently did a book chapter in inquiry-based learning, a conceptual and practical resource for educators, looking at how faculty are doing inquiry-based learning uh, through the use of TOPE. And we also had an article in the Journal of Educational Technology Systems from phase one. We're currently working on, on another article looking at how um, the, the CBAM results, the concerns-based adoption model results, actually end up playing out amongst uh, the phase two and phase three uh, participants. When we did our surveys, we had a couple of open-ended questions. And, and I went through many of those open-ended questions and pulled out some of the most commonly discussed threads. And these are just a couple of them. And I've highlighted the big important areas. Network of people, knowing people, support of my fellow teachers, and community contacts. These ideas kept coming up over and over and over again in nearly every survey. People liked the idea of a community of, of faculty where they can discuss the issues that they're having and share their trials and tribulations and successes and work through the TOPE activities together. Uh, I, I suspect that that's why our, our numbers kind of exploded between phase one and phase two, because people had this ability to really better engage with each other thanks to, to the social networking elements. Thank you. And um, on the 
uh, Tools of Engagement website, we have all these resources linked up for you. If there's anything that's not there, please contact us. There's a contact link on there, and I will make sure that you get any of the information you're looking for. Um, but we do have um, some video testimonials, some comments from past participants. And this is a video of a faculty member, Sean Carter from uh, Fashion Institute of Technology. And it, I wish I wasn't even there as, I, as they took the interview. One of our fellows at FIT had taken this, and it sounded like I was you know, telling her exactly what to say. Um, so please go back to the Tools of Engagement site and listen. Um, but we also have some real live fellows and participants who are here with us. So I'm going to invite them to say a few words about the project. Oops. Um, and um, I also just want to also take time to publicly thank, we had about 10 PIs on the project. Um, for phase three right now, Nathan and Cherie are the most active, kind of keeping us rolling. Um, Kathy Gradle was, uh, kind of tentatively going to be here, but unfortunately she can't make it. But she is also a big part of the heart and soul of the project and a big voice in the community and a great example of what the mentor fellow role actually should take shape as. Um, and um, Martha is a fellow from UB who will be coming. Um, she's on the road to get here. Um, so another person that I can introduce you to that if you wanted to talk. Oh, and, and there's Anne. Come on up, Anne. Um, Anne also just got here, um, and so Ann Perlman is a fellow from Brockport. Chris Price was also a fellow when he was there at Brockport, and um, so I would like you know just um, you know kind of a sentence from some of our fellows that are here on the panel to state you know their support of the project. Um, Lisa Raposa from CPD is um, a project partner, and she will be here later at the conference. Ann Reed from UB I introduced. She's going to talk just a quick sentence or so about her support and Deb Spiro, who I introduced. Um, there's also other co-PIs who could not be here from Cortland. We have Xu Feng Shi um, and also Beth um, from Finger Lakes Community College. Um, Buff State has been involved with a number of fellows there. Um, please forgive me on some of the... Cindy Tissick from UB is one of our great active PIs. And forgive me if I've missed anybody on that. So um, Deb, can you just maybe say a word about the project? Hi, everybody. Deborah Spiro from Nassau Community College. When I met Robin two years ago, I, we talked about this, and it seemed like such an exciting project to me. And it finally came to fruition this semester. And um, it was important for our college as a starting point to, sorry, to get us going in this next direction, in this conversation about online teaching. And um, what I did with Robin is I immersed myself in the experience. Because when I, to learn something, I have to do it. I have to be part of it, grab it, and digest it. So I went through the whole TOPE experience. And we had webinars personal one-on-one -on -one webinars. And then what I did with the campus is send out information. And I ran an information session last week. Some faculty members were able to attend, some weren't, but I got their feedback. And what is critical to this is that we're starting this dialogue on campus about active learning in the online environment and taking advantage of the internet resources and getting away from just the conversation of using the learning management system, but really conceptualizing teaching online. Using TOPE, two things I want to say that are really important to our campus. One, it provides this safe environment so faculty can work at their own pace or come to us for support. Us, my campus, and TOPE people. And two, it is now that point where we're transitioning and using the learning environment to its full potential. So we hope to flesh this out even more next year, but it was a great starting point for us. And um, where we don't have the resources, we now have some of the information out there on the TOPE site that we can piggyback off of and create our own workshops and webinars next year. So we thank TOPE for that. Thank you. And Anne Reed is just going to talk a little bit about um, UB's involvement and her involvement. Hi, 
Hi, um, I'm Ann Reed, and uh, I just wanted to say from an instructional designer standpoint, I think that TOPE is a very useful resource because um, just the website in general, which is open to all of SUNY, is sort of a vetted space for web tools, and so if you have um, somebody that you're working with that wants to use you know, to integrate audio into their course, for example, you can send them to the website and there's um, some tools there with resources on how to use and and so just in, in that case, it's, it's extremely useful and I think that it's important for SUNY to have all, all different types of uh, faculty development opportunities and I think that TOPE is unique in that it is very faculty centered. There's really no in, like in, instructional support person as the instructor. All participants are both instructor and learner simultaneously. Everybody is learning from each other and I think that's unique and very important. And I would also add that it's really the most active professional development opportunity that I've ever experienced. The um, participants are so enthusiastic and so active. I was following the, the, the posts on Google, so I would get a, a, uh, an email every time somebody posts, and I had, to, I had to turn that off because my email was just flooded. You know, dozens of rich conversations are happening every day, and so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of TOPE, and that's my experience. Thank you, Ann. And I'd also like to introduce Ann from Brockport. Can we just help with all the time? Hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Ann. I know a lot of you. Um, I think what's helped us, we're, this is our second year at Brockport being part of the project, and I think this year what we've done, it's, it's really helped to kick off as we've taken some of our sessions and um, three different things we've used. We have an FLC, a faculty learning community, on mobile technology this year, so we are happy to see the mobile uh, as, being, as part of added. the added this year. Yep. And so what we did is we took one of our, e we, had, we made an evening session and we had a, a series of everybody come from the group and we had three people in the group show something that they knew about mobile. And that's where we got some of the, uh, I'm going to say tech afraid faculty members to use the tools. And it, just being in a the supportive group helped an awful lot. And then, um, you don't know this one yet, but we're going to take one of our iPad users groups and it's going to be in May. And we're going to use that group. We have people come from all over the campus interested in new things for their iPads. We're going to take one of those sessions to do it. So again, in a group. And then we did take our teaching and learning day. We had a short session, and we got more people signed up and trying. We got them with the, being there for the support, trying the tool itself. So I think that's what works the best for us so far. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we do want to, um, you know, kind of open up uh, some of the time to have a dialogue about, you know, where can we go from here? Um, you know, one of the things that we need to continue to do is do in-depth analysis on the pre and post survey data that we've been collecting. Um, that CBAM model has been established for like 40 years or more, so it's a, a, a very valid instrument and there's a lot of research out there on how to analyze it. Um, and um, so we're working on, you know, trying to communicate with people like all of you here, how can we sustain, sustain this project? And we're continually looking for additional funding opportunities. Some, you know, uh, the TOPE actually was born at CIT, you know, when they talked about the ITG uh, awards that were announced, you know, some conversations happened among like-minded individuals and that's how we kind of got this involved. And so I'm hoping that more like-minded conversations happen this week here. Um, and so the big idea for instructors and the big idea for TOPE is to reflect, revise, repeat. And so that's what we want to do and hopefully we'll be able to figure out a way to do TOPE phase four. Um, and so I'm just going to kind of open this up for discussion, take just a couple seconds to think, you know, what are some of your ideas now that you know a little bit about the project? Some of you have a history with the project. Some of you just learned about it today, possibly. So what are some of your ideas about how we can make TOPE SUNY-wide? How can we make it supported? And how can we keep it sustainable? There's the contact information. It's also on our TOPE website. So if you have any input that you'd like to share, please do so. And 
Um, I don't think this is going to play through. Probably. Okay, so it's a PDF. So, but on the TOPE site, you can read all the comments from past participants. There's a self-running slideshow there. And this is, again, just um, our contact information. So um, with that, um, yes, uh, so Nathan has uh, the mic. So we can kind of get your questions or comments into the recording for Prosperity. Um, but I'd also like to ask, since we got a little late start, how are we doing on time-wise? So give me the kind of the three minute signal or um, hope. Hi, Hope Wendell, SUNY Ulster. I just love the fact that there's these incentives that even though it's a tiny amount of money, people really appreciate that. And um, I know of our campus, it's really hard to pull anybody out for just a sandwich. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. you know, to have that as a as a incentive, I think is fabulous and if we can keep this going Chris if there's <laughs> <laughs> something that we could do through CPD Kim or um, it, it it just seems like this is a really great way to to really help our faculty get to the next place thank you um, I, and I do see um, you know the, the campuses that have the faculty learning communities that pop up um, at UB we had uh, a couple little communities that just got together over lunch or sometimes it was once a week to you know just be in the same room as they go through some of the activities you can see the activity that relates to that person-to-person -person interaction in addition to the virtual interaction um, that happens across New York and um, you know Chris was there for some of the learning communities that Anne uh, um, has been involved with at Brockport so thank you hi uh, I'm Nate Angel and I'm sorry to speak up as just a friend of SUNY there's only a couple of us here uh, rather than SUNY proper I'm from Lumen Learning I work with David Wiley who will be speaking to you tomorrow about open educational resources but an idea popped up in my mind Great. about TOPE that uh, actually comes from our work with op open educational resources that I thought might be interesting to think about but maybe not possible um, we've found that if you can uh, systematically mark the courses that are part of uh, a coordinated program like this um, even at the student information system level which I realize may be a challenge in a big diverse system like this that enables you to do all kinds of analysis on the kinds of outcomes that well just the sheer number of courses first of all and then the kind of outcomes that might arise from those so um, I, don't, I don't know if that's possible to entertain in a complex system like this, but if there were some way even outside the student information system to uh, mark and tag which courses and therefore which faculty and which students were engaged in something like uh, tools for further engagement, that would be a platform that you could use for analysis in order to demonstrate the kinds of outcomes that might lead to more funding and other things like that. That's a fabulous idea, and I know that's something that um, the center that I'm with at uh, UB, the Center for Educational Innovation, um, we are very much looking forward to trying to do more analysis with online learning and um, you know the idea of trying to look at the LMS and maybe trying to relate the faculty that are in tools of engagement to the, the courses that they're in. And although you know we always say that tools of engagement is a faculty professional development tool, there are so many instances where the students are also just accessing it or the faculty are even copying and pasting and we're encouraging you know if you want your students to do a collaborative group project copy and paste this presentation section into your course so that the students have these curated resources and tutorials at their disposal so being able to see kind of the effect on them um, through that is that's a fabulous idea and we'll try to figure out how we might be able to manage that Yes, as Robin just mentioned, again, everything in there is Creative Commons, and we do encourage all the participants and anybody to go in and, and copy and remix and reuse in any way that they see fit. Hi, Robin. Maureen Larson from Orange. And I'm wondering, is this now part of the, the standard SUNY faculty training when, they're, uh, when they go to the online, uh, the faculty online training for new instructors? Are they pointed to this as um, well? At the moment, I would love to continue dialogues with those from the central SUNY offices to mm -hmm. consider that as an option. It is not part of any of the, um, you know, right now it's a standalone 
um, project that anybody is welcome to participate in, but we would love to explore those possibilities. Because that might be a way to, to make it more SUNY-wide as far as bringing it in. Because, it, I mean, a lot of us mm -hmm. do try to point our faculty to different things, but, I mean, you've got everything in one spot here, so this is awesome. Um, you. you forget half of these by the time you're talking to the faculty, mm -hmm. so it's really wonderful. Yes. Thank you. So uh, I thought I'd introduce myself since I've been referred to a couple times already in the presentation. I'm Chris Price. I am the Academic Programs Manager uh, for the Center for Professional Development, SL Stanhope. Um, and uh, uh, I, I'm on temporary leave from my position at Brockport as the Director of the Teaching and Learning Center there. And I was thinking as you're talking around, one of the things that I love about TOPE, as you said, is that it really gives a, an opportunity for faculty, as Ann mentioned, who may be a little bit reticent about the use of technology to actually have a chance to use it in a supportive environment and not feel like, oh, I'm, if I don't know what to do, I'm going to you know, look stupid. And there's no stupid in TOPE, right? It's yeah. all just, you know, everyone's just trying out, doing their best, and, um, you know, and, and no, everyone's encouraged and supported no matter where they come into the process, which is great for, from a faculty development perspective. But I was thinking the next level for TOPE for me would be to really invite faculty who are now have some of it under their belt to maybe... Um, uh, maybe blog about their experiences on the site, you know, to talk about how they've, you know, introduced it into their courses. I mean, a lot of what we get now, you know, I haven't turned my email off and, you know, so I get the, you know, because I want to see what people are doing because I'm not able to contribute to it so much, but I want to see it. Um, but maybe even a step beyond that, invite folks to, uh, you know, uh, you know, put scholarship or writing, you know, scholarly writing up there mm -hmm. to talk about maybe projects that mm -hmm. came together as a result of starting in TOPE to really make it, you know, for folks to see the end results of, you know, maybe the early, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, starts with technology and then maybe later on uh, being able to, you know, do something innovative in their teaching uh, to, you know, to, again, take it to the next level. I love that idea. I think uh, scholarship of teaching and learning section added in phase four is definitely something we need to consider and encouraging because I can also witness that um, you know the the conversations in the three different phases have evolved and um, there are faculty that are and staff that are in there now that are saying oh this is my third time in TOPE or this is my second time in TOPE and they do share those advanced knowledge that they gained in earlier phases with the other faculty that are in there and people are kind of building and scaffolding and um, so I can see that, um, you know, different levels of interest and in sharing the importance of now writing about how does this affect the, the teaching and learning process. That's definitely something that, great idea. One of the things we're actually looking at this phase of TOPE for, for the on our research side is what impact prior participation has on, on some of these interactions. So now that we actually have a couple of phases under us, we can look and see if faculty participated in, in phase one or phase two or both of those phases or if they're new and, and be able to take that into account when we, we do our own data analysis. Other questions? Or ideas or comments? Thoughts, comments. Kim. Thanks, Kim Scalzo from the CPD. And um, I just want to say that, you know, we've been very interested in this project, of course, from the CPD perspective, since faculty and instructional support staff are a key target audience for us. And I think that um, it's been great to see the participation and the positive feedback about it. You know, I think Robin's question about how do we sustain this and what does that look like um, is, is, you know, kind of where we are. And um, you know, certainly, um, I think from the CPD perspective, we want, would love to see this continue as well. I think it would be really great to hear from folks who are here um, how that, how would you like that to work from your perspective? You know, what role should we be playing at the system level? What role should campuses continue to be playing in this? And, you know, how, how you know, if it, if it doesn't work for all of you and your faculty on the campuses, then it doesn't really matter. So please give us input on that. We are actually going to be meeting um, uh, while we're all here um, at the summit. Um, so grab us, catch us, give us your thoughts, help us think about this so that it, it, um, you know, so that it will work. Thanks. Thank you. And we'll maybe take one more question from the back. Um. Thank you. Uh, mine is not, I'm sorry, mine is not really a question. It's more of a, a little bit of a comment. 
and it flows partly from what you said. Okay, I, um, I come from one of the smaller campuses. And generally, and we're a teaching campus, so you have a full teaching load. And generally, most people don't want to do anything else. Actually, can't afford to do too many things else. However, what I find is that when the campus leadership, you know, mm -hmm. the, the boss, says, I want you guys to do this, then everybody looks over there. When me, as a faculty member, says, I think this is great, look at it. Nobody wants to look at it. So what am I saying? What I'm really saying is that um, it would help a lot if the central administration from time to time, you know, whisper in the ears of uh, the campus leadership to say, mm -hmm. hey, you know, it would be nice if you get your guys to look this way, do this kind of things, mm -hmm. and so forth. Because if, it doesn't, if, if that doesn't happen, then it becomes, on the campus level, it becomes more of a project that, you know, some people who mm -hmm. are interested do. You become like John the Baptist, kind of like in the, a voice in the middle of nowhere. Perfect. And, Perfect. You know, and, and if you do that too many times, you, you know, you, you run out of gas. Mm -hmm. So if, if the central administration, you know, kind of, like, I came here on my own. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not asking anybody to give me anything, but I came here on my own. Suppose if a word had come down from above, maybe there would have been more than one of me here. Mm -hmm. So think about that in building this summer. Another because thing. I can tell you right now, um, if I get promoted, it wouldn't be because I'm here. <laughs> yes. It would be because I did what the boss wanted. Mm -hmm. So if you make the boss like this, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you all for your attention, and um, there are some cards on your tables that um, talk about tools of engagement, so please feel free to take as many as you want and share them back with any of the people at your campus. It is a publicly available resource that we would love you to take advantage of. Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation to talk here. Thank you to my panel.